if you will recall, the rule for that, first of all, is a little complicated because you've got like 1 over the natural log of the base times 1 over the expression times the derivative of the expression. Okay, uh, so we would have 1 over the natural log of 4 times 1 over the derivative of x plus 1. And then we've got to take the derivative of the square root of x plus 1, and then we've got to simplify all that stuff. So let's first of all use some properties of logs to rewrite this expression. Okay, before we even take the derivative, we're going to rewrite this expression. First of all, let's use the change of base. Okay, let's use the change of base formula. So that says that the natural log of the square root of x plus 1 over the natural log of 4 is how we can rewrite that expression. Now, we can also rewrite the square root as an exponent, can we not? And I'm going to go ahead and move that natural log of 4 to the front. Okay, we can write, rewrite the square root as the 1 half power. And then if we do that, Another property of logarithms is if you have an exponent, you can move that to become a coefficient. So f of x is equal to, uh, well, let me do this in two steps so I don't confuse you. 1 over the natural log of 4 times, I'm going to move that exponent to be a coefficient, so times 1 half natural log of x plus 1. So we've got a fraction times a fraction. All we do is multiply straight across the top. 1 times 1 is 1. The natural log of 4 times 2. You don't change what's inside the natural log. The 2 goes in front. All right. So it, now it may look like we've kind of complicated things a little bit because we've got that weird-looking coefficient. But really, we just simplified our differentiation by a ton, okay? So f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2 natural log of 4 is a constant multiple. That just stays in front. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over what's inside the log times the derivative of what's inside the log, and in this case that's just 1. And if we fix things up a little bit, that's going to be 1 over, you'll probably see 2 natural log of 4 written as the natural log of 16. I'm just using those properties again to move that coefficient to become an exponent. So the 2 in front becomes an exponent on the 4, so that's uh, 4 squared, which is 16, times x plus 1. And typically, if if something follows the natural log like that, don't put the natural log in parentheses so that you don't think the x plus 1 is inside that natural log. Okay, now I promise you, I'm not going to go through finding the derivative without rewriting it first because it's kind of lengthy and you've got a square root and it just it gets complicated. Uh, but I promise you, it's easier to rewrite it first and then take the derivative. It would be very hard to get to the simplified version if you just applied your derivative rules for logarithms there. Okay? Now, that one I tried to throw a bunch of things in there. Here's a practice problem for you that is much easier. Our properties of logarithms say when you're taking the natural log of a quotient, you can expand that into the difference of natural logs. So we've got the natural log of the top. minus the natural log of the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and write that square root as the one-half power, because I know I'm headed there eventually. Okay, now, within that first natural log, we have a product, e to the x times x squared plus 1 squared, so we can split that up even further, the natural log of a product is the sum of natural logs. Alright, and 
and this should be our last step of, of simplifying here, the natural log of e to the x. We can simplify that, can't we? What is that equal to? Just x. It's just equal to x. The natural log and the e cancel each other out. That's just x. Plus, we can bring down that exponent to be a coefficient. So 2 natural log of x squared plus 1 minus 1 half natural log of 2x cubed minus 1. That is as much simplifying as we can do using the properties of log C. Okay? Be careful that you don't start trying to split that up into the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of 1. Can't do that. Okay? It's only when you've got the log of a product or a quotient or a power. Those are the only things you can do. All right, so now we can take the derivative. And I promise you it's a lot easier than the quotient rule involving the product rule involving the chain rule involving an exponential function. Because f prime of x, the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 2 natural log of x squared plus 1 is 2 over what's inside the logarithm times the derivative of what was inside the logarithm. So 2 over x squared plus 1 times 2x, and then go ahead and stick the 2x there in the numerator. Minus 1 half times uh, 1 over what was inside the logarithm. So I'm just going to stick that down there with the 2 times, so back in the numerator, the derivative of what was inside the log. So the derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared. And the derivative of minus 1 is 0. All right, so probably I don't anticipate them doing a whole lot to simplify this. So we've got 1 over 4x over x squared plus 1 minus 6x, oops, actually 6 over 2. That can reduce to give us 3. 3x squared over 2x cubed minus 1. Honestly, that's probably all they're going to do. Do what? Okay. Good. All right. Yeah, technically we could get a common denominator and put those all together, but... Yeah, probably not going to happen. Um, I mean, yeah. I just don't think they're going to do that. I really don't. I really don't. Um, because if they give you a question like this, okay, if they give you a question like this, they're not giving it to you to see if you can do the quotient rule with the product rule with the chain rule. They're giving it to you to see did you learn about using properties of logarithms to make this a simpler problem to then take the derivative of it? So if you do that, then that's the answer you're going to get. If you do the other thing, you're going to get the answer of this with a common denominator, uh, which is just, it's, it gets big. So I'm going to leave it there.